All right. Happy New Year. I hope you have getting off to a good start to the year. This podcast is going to be about motivation and getting started or getting unstuck with whatever you're thinking about working on. Uh, it'll touch a little bit on habits, but there's lots of good podcasts right now uh, about habits and New Year's resolutions and things like that. Uh, this is my contribution to the the mix, and it's based on the conversations that I have every day with patients that are working on their physical health uh, and clients who are working on their uh, mental, emotional health, their spiritual health, and relational health. So here at the start of 2023, how are you doing in these different areas of life? How are you doing spiritually? How are you doing emotionally? How are you doing physically and in relationships and in personal growth? And that can be career or academics or whatever area of life that you're trying to improve and grow in. So how are you doing in those different areas of life? Now, a lot of folks here at the start of the year, uh, especially if they're on social media, there can be a temptation to do the new year, new me thing and start a new diet plan, get back to the gym, start eating healthier, especially if you got off track during the holidays and come up with a, a plan uh, and all these different goals that you want to work on. Uh, Bible read through, um, limiting so screen time and social media. See lots of posts on social media about quitting social media and, and fasting uh, from, from whatever. And it's, it it can be inspiring, but for a lot of people, it can be overwhelming and discouraging. And especially if you're like so many people, you have good intentions, like in the past resolutions and start off the, the, the typical pattern of starting off the year at the gym, uh, doing great with and picking a diet plan, paleo, keto, uh, plant-based eating, and whole 30 and uh and hitting it really hard at the beginning of the year and then petering out or burning out so hopefully this podcast will encourage you to break that pattern if that's a pattern uh, in your life by understanding a little bit more about fi finding your motivation Staying motivated and protecting your motivation. Now, one book I'd like to recommend, it's very helpful, is a book by Bill O'Hanlon called Change 101. And one key uh, idea from that book that I've found helpful uh, is the idea of understanding the positive and the negative factors of, of that uh, that affect your motivation and understand how your past your present and your future impact your your, your motivation so let, let's start there um we we have positive reasons to change and we have negative reasons to change and starting in our past and so some folks had a great past a great upbringing uh, great family, uh, supportive family, um, great uh, home life, and happy, carefree childhood. And so how that impacts their present is because they had a positive experience in their past, they want to protect that or continue that and repeat uh, that. And so they 
there's a lot of things from their family of origin and childhood and upbringing that they want to continue to experience uh, for, uh, in, in their in their lives. And a, a lot of those positive things form their priorities and, and their values. Um, so an example is uh, some some families, they grow up going on vacations and going on trips and great memories, great times of connecting uh, and enjoyable times. And so if that's you, you might be motivated to do what you need to do to be able to continue to travel and, and take your family on vacations. And so because that's important to you, you make prioritize saving enough money and being wise with money um, to be able to afford to do that. And you might find a partner who also enjoys doing the uh, living life that way. And so that's a pot. That's an example of a positive motivator from the, your past. A negative motivator from your past might be, this is um, s- something negative, something painful, something I didn't like from my past. And so I'm motivated to not experience that in the present. I'm motivated to move away from that. Um, experience. And uh, that can be um, seeing a family member struggle with diabetes, um, seeing a family member get sick um, from smoking um, and uh, struggling with the health. And so um, negatively being motivated from the past is I don't want to experience that. I don't want that to be true for me. And so I need to do what I need. Um, I need to make changes and live life in a different way. So that's motivation, negative and positive motivation in the past. Negative and positive motivation in the present is I like how things are going. I like the um, where I'm living. I like my relationship. And I, I'm motivated to stay on track with what I'm experiencing uh, in the present. And so, you know, that might be a relationship. And so, you, you know, you find something with your, your, your partner and it's, you know, maybe better than what you've experienced in the past. Again, like negative motivation from the past pairing with positive motivation in the present. I'm going to do what it takes to protect this good thing that's happening. Um, and a negative motivator in the present is I don't like what's happening. Um, like I'm unhappy at work, I need to make a change. Um, uh, I'm not happy in my relationship. It needs to improve. Um, I need to, you know, t- talk, talk to my partner about how things are going. And so there, there are, that's a negative motivator in the present. Oh, so I forgot to ask this earlier. So when I describe positive, negative motivators from the past. What are those for you? What are some things that motivate you or drive you um, that are affecting you? Maybe you haven't even thought about that. And what are some of the positive things in the present that you want to protect in here in 2023? Maybe it's something uh, that something new you experienced in the last a year or two coming out of the pandemic and yeah, like I, I want to keep doing uh, that this year. And are there any negatives um, in the present or is there anything that uh, is, is happening that needs to improve or change um, in, in the present? And Last two, positive and negative motivators looking towards the future. So um, what are you moving towards? So something positive in the future. I want to go on vacation. I want to buy a house. Uh, I want to be in a certain uh, career field. Uh, That would make me happy. Uh, Those are goals and dreams and hopes. Uh, that I'm moving towards. So those are positive motivators. 
and uh, negative motivators in the future are, I don't want to end up there. I don't want to end up in the hospital when I'm 50 years old. I don't want to end up with knee pain uh, from being 50 pounds overweight. I, I don't want to uh, go through holidays where my kids don't uh, want to spend time with me. So that that's the negative, right? The positive is I want to have a good relationship with my adult children and I want them to spend time with me. Um, so w w here at the start of the year, do you like the direction that your life is heading? Do you like what you see when you project forward into the future? And are you on track with your hopes and dreams and your goals? Or are you distracted? Um, are you are you off track? And for for some people, they're they're just they're just in survival mode. They're reacting. They don't have the bandwidth to think about five years from now, ten years from now, twenty years from now. They're just trying to survive. Um, and I don't know if that's for you where 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 you're at. Um, you know, if if you uh, if it's painful or stressful or overwhelming to think about the future, then yeah, pull it back to yeah, what are the positive and positive and negative things affecting you in the present? So past, present, future. So take some time to think about kind of where you're at. And uh, sometimes it's hard to to take action, um, uh, take steps um, moving forward with growth or, or direction without being clear about where you're heading. I think it was uh, Michael Hyatt's wife. I think her name is Mary. Um, uh, I heard this quote on his podcast that if you lose, if you lose your why, then you lose your way. You lose your way when you lose your why. So um, besides where you want to end up, right? End up in a house, end up in a certain job position, um, end up uh, married. Um, uh, besides where, your destination, but why? Why are you doing what you're doing? That's, that's one of the key things with motivation. Do you have a compelling uh, mission and purpose and do you have a compelling why that overcomes the grind, the mundane, the the day to day uh, of life, or are you just reacting uh, to life? Do you um, so what what uh, what's what's your why? What's your sense of purpose? Um, and is it is it exciting? Um, and I don't mean like uh, exciting in the way of like ah, this is a, a, a stimulating dopamine hit uh, on, on, on social media. I don't mean that type of a rush or, or short-term excitement. Um, I mean something that's deeply uh, significant and meaningful to you and uh, re really is, is compelling that I want to give my life uh, to this. Um, uh a, a, a different way of saying like, are you clear is what is your, what is the state of your heart uh, right now? Cause that can definitely affect your motivation. Um, I want to say a little bit more about that. Um, it, it, if you're just kind of going through the motions uh, of life and, and there's lots of reasons for that. Um, it, it, it could be your responsibilities. You could be overwhelmed. Um, it could just be busyness. Um, and uh, so, so he, I, I hope as you're listening that you take time to kind of assess the state of your heart, the state of your soul. 
how are you doing emotionally? Um, because a lot of people, when I talk to them, well, I, you know, I, I, I t uh, half of the week I, I talk to people that have been referred to the health and wellness department uh, where I work because they need to get on track with their physical health, um, their, their cholesterol levels, their blood sugar levels, their weight, um, their pain, uh, different, their, their doctor, their medical doctor has recommended them to talk to a health coach. And so, so often I talk to people about, you know, that their goal for losing 30, 40 pounds, but we end up, we end up talking more, more about their, their life and the way life is unfolding for them. Um, then talking about calories and balancing uh, carbs and healthy protein and fat, um, or are they getting enough exercise? Because healthy habits, like uh, like a healthy meal plan or a healthy diet, is just a tool for living the life that you want to live. And like and exercise, same thing. Exercise isn't the goal. Exercise is a tool for having the physical energy and strength to do what your body needs to do uh, to live out, uh, again, live out the life uh, that you want to live. And the, uh, so, uh, sorry, got, got off track. <laughs> this is such a big topic, right? Life, living life. Um, so being clear, uh, I might have to edit this part. <laughs> um, there's so much I want to say, right? This is so important. Uh, purpose, meaning, uh, you know, what better project, self-improvement project, uh, could you work on? Uh, do-it-yourself project, could you work on than, than the one life that you have to live? Uh, okay, so let me say a little bit more um, on, on why, right? So finding your why. Um, one thing that all these books about habit, the power of habit, atomic habits, um, tiny habits, uh, has emphasized is uh, also dopamine nation and, and uh, Anna Lemke's uh, book on uh, dopamine addiction and uh, is we don't uh, very often we don't do what's most important to us. That's why it's helpful to re remind yourself of your purpose and your mission and get realigned and and was it recompute the GPS? Have I turned the wrong direction? Am I uh, in the wrong part of town? Do I have to get back on the on the path uh, that I most want to to be on? Is we we often don't do what's most important. We do what's easiest and what we've practiced. We do our habits, and this is one reality that or. Uh, that, that will help people uh, adjust their expectations about change and motivation is, uh, you know, I want to lose weight. Why, why do I binge eat? Uh, why do I eat so unhealthily? Um, you know, I love my kids. Why? Do I not spend time with them? Why is it so hard to connect with them or my wife? Um, and so again, understanding uh, ha habits um, and, and how they work can be really helpful. Um, uh, habits are uh, what we do and how we do things. And uh, again, they're tools. Uh, so it can help to take a look at how are your habits affecting your motivation? Okay. So how are your habits affecting your motivation, what you do, your actions, and um, your energy level? 
right? So motivation can, can be a mental, uh, a description of your, your commitment, your drive, your, your, you know, what you're telling yourself to move towards your goals. Uh, but motivation can also be a description of the energy that you have and the willpower that you have towards taking action towards th those goals. And so taking a look, are, are my habits helping me or hurting me when it comes to my goals? And that um, it can, and, and it can help to kind of take a look at your, your morning routine, how you start your day. It can help to take a look at your habits during the day and how you spend your time and what you give your time and energy to. And then how, what, what do your evenings look like? What, what are your habits and rhythms and patterns in the evenings and, and bedtime? And so how are my habits? How are my behaviors? Do they align with the direction I say I want to go or um, I'm, I'm choosing to go? Would someone on the outside looking in know what I'm about and where I'm going in life? Okay, I know that's a lot. Hit pause, think about it, write it down. Um, so uh, another uh, aspect of motivation, I, I want to say this, is some uh, sometimes people feel they, they, when they call into the health coach team, they, they want a drill instructor. They, they, they want accountability. They, they want someone to tell them what to do. They want someone to like be bad cop and drill instructor and kind of uh, kick them in the butt to, to get going. Or they'll call it like, I, I have no motivation. And so uh, I need you to motivate me. That's kind of what they're hoping. That's what they're calling for. Um, so I want to say a little bit about intrinsic and e extrinsic motivation. And so uh, external motivation, extrinsic, um, being motivated from the outside in, and then and then having that internal drive, that internal motivation, uh, uh, the, where you are the source of, of uh, motivation and, and, and decision making and, and action. Very often, uh, I'll, I'll have clients who have lived family of origin or they're just their, their, their experiences with a low sense of self-efficacy. So a low sense of power and self-determination that their decisions matter um, or that they have the freedom or power to make choices uh, in their life. And sometimes that's a family dynamic. So if you have a, a parent, a mother, father, or both who are very like dominant and have very strong opinions and, um, you know, lots of energy with the way they communicate, very strong opinions. Um, and you didn't have permission or freedom to think your own thoughts, feel your own feelings, make your own decisions, make your own choices. If you grew up thinking that what you want didn't matter or doesn't matter, it can be really hard to be self-motivated. Um, you could feel beaten down by criticism. Um, yeah, if you weren't affirmed or empowered to, um, uh, to, to, to grow, to, to stand on your own. Um, and, uh, Angela Duckworth, she wrote a book about grit. Um, and so sometimes you, you, you're just used to reacting and making decisions based on what other people want or need. And, uh, and, and, and you're just kind of secondary to other people's lives. Um, and uh, so, so that, that can be really tough and that can be a really, um, so, so that's the negative. The positive is trying to grow in your uh, ability and your freedom to make choices. Um, and 
uh, yeah, that, uh, that I, I spent a lot of time exploring uh, this, this with people like if they're stuck, just trying to listen to their story, just trying to hear what, what's holding you back. What, what, what's hard about, uh, move, moving forward. And so, um, what's hard about, and for some people, what's hard is saying, I want this. I want to experience this in life. I want to go for this. Um, and it, it's both hard to hear, but also very, um, fun, very fulfilling to see people, um, break free from those limitations that they have on themselves. You know, one, one, uh, one of the, um, my favorite things about being a dad is seeing my kids, um, become who, who they are. Um, e even though there's, you know, there's tough moments <laughs> where, and, and, you know, those tough moments are, are very telling that like, uh, you know, when I want to control their choices, that's when it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm making life and their life about me. Um, so, you know, those are very humbling, um, and hard, um, times in life. Maybe I'll do more episodes about that and maybe ask my kids to be brave and, and like to talk about it. <laughs> and, uh, um, the, uh, you know, parents can definitely imperfect parents, um, or, or unhealthy parents can definitely affect motivation of their kids uh little teens college age adult children and maybe you experience that during the holidays um so what's holding you back um why why is this hard um and are are you experiencing external pressures people people telling you what you should do who you should be um, giving you unsolicited advice. And is it hard for you to like say, no, thank you. Um, and is it confusing? See, it's, it's really confusing when you don't know where you're going. And it's really confusing when you don't know who you are. And that's part of healthy boundaries is being clear about who, who you are. Um, and that can affect that can affect motivation um, and your choices. Um, you know, does this choice align with who I am and who I am becoming? Uh, and, and that's, that's a lot of cognitive dissonance or that creates a lot. Um, it creates a lot of stress and confusion and, um, inner turmoil when you act out of character and it's not sustainable. Um, I will say though, if you've been raised a certain way, you think that's who you are. If you, people have been telling you all your life, this is who you are. it can be very stressful to change and uncomfortable to try new things. Um, so, as you can imagine, or maybe, you know, as you're listening, like it really helps to, to meet with a counselor to sort out that stuff. If it, if it, if it is messy. Okay. Uh, I hope this is, this isn't that uh, I hope this uh, podcast isn't uh, too confusing. Um, uh, motivation. Let's, let's get back on track. Um, so do you like the direction that your life is heading? Where are you heading? Do you like who you are becoming? Are you at ease with yourself? Um, do you do you like uh, enjoy your strengths, your qualities? Are you able to identify your strengths? Um, that that can be really helpful. And are there any um, weaknesses or or areas that you want to grow in? And sometimes that can be motivating. Uh, that can be fun to work on, to develop. Um, 
I often talk about my, my uh, favorite sport. Um, and really it, for me, it's like almost more than a sport. It's like kind of a way of life. Um, uh, Jujitsu is a, it's a fun activity and it's something that you, you, you grow and develop in. Uh, but everybody f- is kind of has their own quote unquote uh, jujitsu. It, it could be literally jujitsu or it could be music. It could be, uh, it could be writing. It could um, be crafts work, woodworking. Um, uh, I think the word, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure the word Kung Fu, um, you know, it, it, we, we usually identify or think of that as a martial art. Um, but I think the word Kung Fu pretty sure is, is Kung Fu is a skill. And so it's not necessarily martial arts. And, uh, so what, what area do you want to grow in? What are you motivated to, to work on, to grow and improve, uh, this year? All right. Um, we'll start to wind this down. I do want to say, uh, a little bit about, um, um, something that can affect your motivation is, um, some people or two, two, two things actually. Um, so shame, uh, shame and fear. Uh, the first one, shame. So a lot of people think they have to have like a come to Jesus moment, um, where, uh, Oh, I mentioned this, you know, when people call in and they want the bad cop and they want to get kicked into shape. Um, and so sometimes we associate like a come to Jesus moment where, uh, like you get convicted and you get called out and the, you know, you get, um, uh, slapped around and, 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 and then you're, you're, um, and then you repent and you get your life on track. Right. Um, and so, so sometimes that can be a good way to start. That can be helpful, especially if you, you are off track and heading towards, you know, in destructive directions. Um, but people overuse that, especially in Christian circles, being hard on yourself, being a perfectionist, um, shaming yourself to, with the idea that if I feel bad enough, I'll change. Um, if I convince myself that pornography is bad enough, then I'll change my behavior. If I, uh, have empathy and tune into how I'm hurting other people, then I will change my behavior. And it works, but it doesn't always work. Um, so, uh, or I I'm, I am lazy. So some people are really hard on themselves. They beat themselves up and I'm lazy. I'm a bad person. So I need to change. Here's the thing about repeatedly telling yourself you're lazy and you're a bad person is you will act like a lazy person and you will act like a bad person. You know, we, we, we live out the identity we live that we give ourselves. We live out the way we see ourselves. And so, yes, pain, like if I put my hand there and it hurts me, ouch, I pull my hand away. Yes, that's smart. Um, it's really hard though to change behaviors and patterns and habits that you've done and practiced for decades. And so being so sometimes you're not lazy telling yourself you're, you're lazy isn't the way to motivate yourself. Um, what, what if you are tired? What if you are healing? What if you're depressed? What if you're overwhelmed and anxious? So you went, if you, if you are being lazy, then the antidote is to yes, like stop being lazy and just get going. Right. Have you noticed that like for, uh, for most of the people I talk about, that does not work because there's, it's multifactorial motivation and, um, and emotional health 
is multifactorial. There's it's complicated. There's different elements that are factoring into where you are at in life. And very often emotions are like the gas pedal or the brakes on what we actually do, not what's most important. How we are feeling emotionally very often determines how we react or what we do. And so an example of that is like, it's really important for me to lose weight because I need to get hernia surgery or knee surgery. I have to get to a certain BMI in order to schedule a surgery. Very important. Or I've got a wedding coming up and want to be able to look good um, in the dress or, or in the suit. Very important. Still stuck in the habits. Um, negative eating emotional eating, stress eating. So the, 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 the need isn't to feel bad enough. The need is to address the unmet needs. Um, the core problem, like not being motivated or, um, yes, not being motivated, not taking action, not doing what you say you want to do. That's a symptom. So move it back. Like, like drill down. Like what is the actual core problem? that is stealing away my motivation or yeah, I'm plenty motivated. It's plenty important, but what's on top of that dragging me down um, where I can't access and plug into that. Like, so like some people, they're just numb. They're, they're apathetic because they're depressed. They're anxious. They're overwhelmed. They're not quote, just being lazy. Maybe that's you. And so w where to start? So, so, you know, meal plan, apps, you know, accountability, all that stuff. Sometimes uh, uh, making improvements in your health, emo emotion, spiritual, relational, physical, it's figuring out like what's the one area and this is from the one thing, what's the one area that if I worked on it, because I can't work on everything that, that if I worked on that, it would make everything else easier. So here at the start of the year, don't like, don't, don't do the thing where you, you set up a bunch of uh, plates to spin, like in the circus. I used to love that on Abbott and, Cost and Costello or old movies, black and white movies where they had the spinning plates. But so many people start out the year, um, you know, with their to-do list of all these great things that they're going to do this year, spinning plates. And then the, the, the yeah, you know, the, the, the plates fall and break. Um, what simplify it and, and drill down to what, what is motivating me positive, negative from the past. Positive, negative in the present. Positive, negative in the future. Um, don't don't shame yourself. Um, fear. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll end with this. So sometimes I say, um, when the pain of staying the same outweighs the pain of change, you'll change. Right. When, when what the status quo, how things are, becomes so unlivable that you must make, make a change, even though it's inconvenient or hard or painful, um, then you'll change. Uh, that, that, that's true a lot of the time. But sometimes it's not. And, and there's something that's even more powerful than the pain of change and the pain of staying the same and that's fear. And so even though my life is unlivable, I'm afraid. Um, or even though um, I'm losing my marriage or my marriage is falling apart or um, my, my addiction is getting out of control or is out of control. I'm afraid. And it's 
it's very hard to change on your own. That's like, you know, it's if, if there might be an area of your life, like if I could have changed on my own, I would have by now. Right. And so take a look at with your motivation, if you're stuck or having a hard time starting, is what are you afraid of? So very often, it's the fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of uh, being alone, uh, and and all of those things are painful. Um, but so sometimes uh, it's not just it's not just fear of failure that holds us back. Sometimes it's fear of success, and fear that if if i grow or improve that i'll have to maintain that change and i don't know if i can do that in the long term i don't know if i start like start to help out in a ministry or put myself out there if i'll be able to handle the discomfort um or the lack of self-confidence or the lack of experience and you know, it's imposter syndrome, then I'll, I'll have to pull back. I'll, I, I don't know if I can uh, accept that promotion or that new responsibility or that new role because w what if I'm not good enough or I can't learn things fast enough? And, they'll, and you know, people will regret <laughs> giving me the promotion or um, fear of success, like putting yourself out for a relationship or, or dating uh, again or for the first time. And, you know, I don't know if I'll be a good partner. Um, they're going to reveal or they're going to, they're going to see. And, and I guess that ultimately fear of success uh, goes back to fear of failing and not being able to sustain the success. Um, I've definitely experienced that, uh, in the past. Um, there's been a few, few times had some opportunities that, uh, I pulled away from, um, didn't return emails, didn't return phone, call, phone calls, uh, things like that. So, uh, it's it's a hard one it's a hard one and this is the courage coaching and counseling podcast um how do we overcome or at least start um and grow um it, it's courage so i hope uh i hope you'll be brave this year and be braver this year i'm trying um, uh, j just hopping on here. I, you've heard me say this before, if you've listened, like it's, it's, uh, um, it's still hard to, um, even though I have these conversations six days a week with dozens of people every week, it's still hard to hit record on, on this podcast. Um, a few things coming up uh, this month, uh, excited about going to speak at my first uh, men's conference. Uh, I love, uh, encouraging men, husbands, dads, and going to get to do that outside of the counseling office, uh, at a church, uh, up in uh, battleground, looking forward to that. And, uh, also looking forward to a marriage, uh, connect couples connect at uh, Maga Day central, uh, community here in Portland. Um, I'll probably do another episode this month on, uh, on marriage. And again, thanks for listening. If you've listened this far, uh, thank you for putting up with the rambling. I uh, love talking about uh, motivation and life. Um, definitely encourage you to uh, give me feedback about any episodes that you might want or any questions you might have about mental health, emotional health, spiritual health. And you can, uh, on uh, Facebook, uh, we have a, a Facebook group group for the podcast you can type in comments there and get a hold of me there um, or if you're watching on youtube you can uh, comment in the comments all right guys here's to a great 2023